Let me show you an application of parameterization. What I'd like us to do is find an equation for the tangent plane to the surface z equals x squared minus y squared at the point 1, 2, negative 3. Now you might remember that the graph of z equals x squared minus y squared is a hyperbolic paraboloid. Not really important to know the picture, but uh, I'd like us to use some kind of geometric um, imagination as we work on this. So first of all, before I go through this process, I want to remind you that we already have an excellent way to find an equation for the tangent plane. We would rewrite the equation so that this was the level curve or the level surface of x squared minus y squared minus z, and then we would use the gradient to find a normal vector. And in fact, that's the most efficient way to do that. Um, I want us to do this using another method, which is going to be a little bit um, less efficient, but it's going to give us practice understanding what parameterizations are. So first of all, let's parameterize the surface. Z is written as a function of x and y, so a great way to parameterize it would be to set x equal to x, y equal to y, and z equal to x squared minus y squared. In other words, phi is, well, phi of x and y is equal to x, y, and x squared minus y squared. Now let's think about what happens as I use this parameterization. Let's say that I held y fixed and let x vary. So for example, when x equals 1 and y equals 2, I'm at the point 1, 2, negative 3. Let's say that's here on the graph. Let's say that I hold y fixed and I let x vary. Well, that means that my y coordinate is going to stay the same and my x coordinate is going to change. So that's going to take me along a curve kind of parallel to the xz plane, or actually parallel to the xz plane. And it's going to be a parabola. So if I take the derivative with respect to x, I'm going to get a tangent vector to that parabola. And since the curve lives in the plane, that means that this vector is going to be tangent. Sorry, since the, the curve lives in the surface, this vector is going to be tangent to the surface. But if we hold y constant and we differentiate with respect to x, we know that that gives us a partial derivative, d phi dx. So let's calculate d phi dx. The derivative of phi with respect to x is 1, 0, 2x. So in particular, d phi dx when x is 1 and y is 2, is going to equal 1, 0, 2. And 1, 0, 2 are the components of d phi dx right here. So this is that vector. Now let's do the same thing with respect to y. If I hold x constant and let y vary, that's going to give me a parabola that loops up over the top of the hyperboloid. So it's going to come over this way. So if I then differentiate with respect to y holding x constant, that'll give me a vector which is uh, parallel, which is tangent to the curve. And since the curve's in the surface, this vector is going to be tangent to the surface as well. And that's going to be the vector d phi dy. So let's calculate d phi dy. In general, d phi dy at the point x, y is going to be 0, 1, negative 2y. So in particular, when x equals 1 and y equals 2, d phi dy of 1, 2, is going to be 0, 1, negative 4. So these two vectors lie in the tangent plane
at the point P. To write the equation for the tangent plane, though, we need a normal vector to the tangent plane. But if I have two vectors that are in the tangent plane, then their cross product is going to be perpendicular to the tangent plane. So to get a normal vector, in other words, a vector which is perpendicular to the tangent plane at this point P, I'll take d phi dx and cross it with d phi dy. So I'll be taking the determinant of i, j, k, d phi dx, which is 1, 0, 2, and d phi dy, which is 0, 1, negative 4. Taking that cross product, let's see what we get. I'll get 0 minus 2, so negative 2, then 0 minus negative 4 is 4, and then 1. Now remember a great way to do a spot check to see whether your normal vector really is perpendicular is we can dot this with each of these two vectors and make sure that we get 0. Taking the dot product, negative 2 plus 0 plus 2 is 0. So this is perpendicular to d phi dx. And 0 plus 4 minus 4 is also 0. So it's perpendicular to d phi dy. So this guy is my normal vector. And this is my point p. So I can use my regular formula for writing the equation for a tangent plane, which is a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. Where a, b, and c are the components of the normal vector and x naught, y naught, z naught are the coordinates of p. So I get negative two times x minus one plus four times y minus two plus 1 times z plus 3 equals 0, which is negative 2x plus 4y plus z equals, let's see, 4, sorry, 2 minus 8 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Looks like we have it negative 2x plus 4y plus z equals 3, or we can write 2x minus 4y minus z is negative 3. Either one of those answers would be fine. Uh, but before I leave, uh, just a quick reminder. It is easier to get this answer using gradients, and I encourage you to go back and rewrite this in the form x squared minus y minus z equals 0 call this guy f of x, y, and z, and verify that you can get a normal vector by taking the gradient of f and evaluating it at the point p, 1, 2, negative 3.